recording. And I'm going to kind of go back briefly and say welcome again to our Sunday morning spiritual celebration. We do. We come every Sunday at 11 o'clock for about an hour or so to embrace and to honor our the spirit of our, our spirit man, you know, just to uh, acknowledge that we, yes, we know you're there. And yes, we love the communication, the communicate, communing with you and the, the joy of having you as part of my being and part of who and what we are. So welcome, welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome the spirit of each one of you. Namaste. And I welcome my spirit this morning to be a part of the day. And this week, this this Sunday, tonight, today, we're going to be talking about our beliefs. We're going to be celebrating our beliefs in some way, somewhat, because we're going to be looking at the, you know, and I think one of the questions that I'm going to pose to you to think about, to contemplate on is, are beliefs true or false or neither or both? You know, Think about that. Are your beliefs, are our beliefs true? Or are they false? Are they, what are they? But we do know that they are, they are creating our reality. That we know. We know that. We don't have, it's not something that we believe. We know that because we recognize that what we see in our lives are things that we believe. And when, when we see something that we don't want in our lives, I'm going to tell you, we need to go back and check our beliefs because it wouldn't be there. Wouldn't be, you wouldn't be experiencing it unless you believe it. And yeah, you can believe a negative. Yes, you can. You can believe a negative. <laughs> so we're going to talk about a little bit that today. And our and our march, our affirmation for the week, it is from Matthew 9, 29. And it says very simply, it is done to me according to my beliefs. I get something else I want to ask you too. Who do you believe? You know, we're hearing people all day, every day, and we're seeing things and we're seeing advertisements, we're seeing, you know, promotions, we're seeing, hearing opinions. How do you pick and choose what you're going to believe out of all of the things that you are faced with? We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the message. But right now, I am going to, I was, I wanted to play just a little bit of uh, uh, Jason Upton, and I think that I may, we may have an opportunity to hear a little bit of Jason Upton this morning, and he says, he's, and it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rendition. He said, it's, his song is called Here With Me. I want to play a little bit of that before I invite Larry to lead us, uh, to guide us in our meditation this morning. Um, and I'm going to try, like I said, I'm doing, I'm kind of solo today, so I'm kind of doing this alone. So bear with me. I'm going to try to put it on. Try to find it and put it on here. Let's see. Can hold up just a second. Finish microblading for this. Back, I'm going to share my screen with you. Yeah, click that. There you go. Larry, you're up. This is. Larry, guide us in our meditation at this time. Yeah, I I was rolling and muted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sometimes being in the present moment can uh, leave you uh, unaware. No, that's not right. Cancel that. 
know if it's I'm unaware or you just don't care. I mean, we need to cancel that too, but it leaves us unattached from our embarrassments. All right, folks, let's redo that. And just give yourself a moment. Give yourself uh, this time. You, you've set aside this time. Uh, is actually the Aramaic version or uh, definition of holy is set aside. It's set apart from the normal. So this is holy time. Any time that you give to yourself, you give it to yourself wholly. O W H O L. You are allowing yourself to be whole and in the present moment. And you've set aside time from the normal um, day, the normal events. You've given yourself the gift of presence, the gift of being. So close your eyes and relax. Again, if you're always uh, in a safe place, the risk of uh, putting this out over the internet and on video on tape, you know, you can go into this state and be completely alert and at peace, safe, always, and at peace. But focus on your breath, breathe, relax, and receive. Each breath that you take is like a mantra by itself, bringing you into the present moment. When you calm your breath, when you slow your breath, you send signals to your brain that you're safe and that you're calm and that you are in control. So bring the breath work to your daily life, beyond the meditation room, beyond the meditation chair, beyond this holy moment to make each and every moment whole and holy. Set your life apart. Not separate, but realize that you're on a mission to experience love, to experience joy, to experience gratitude. And that when you're able to bring those sorts of elevated emotions into your conscious intention and blend it with your imagination, you can create a future based on this present moment, giving up anything in the past that you no longer need or want or that no longer serves you. That you can use your imagination and blend it with an elevated emotion to create a future that is loving, that is peaceful, that is kind, that is generous. that we as powerful creators can call that up. And then when we create that, when we create that out of nothing, possibly linked, of course, to a past, we consciously choose which path we take in the future. But as we sink deeper and deeper into our soul, into our subconscious, we allow ourselves to connect with the great superconscious. And when that occurs, possibilities are endless. possibilities are beyond 
our imagination. So we go through our imagination to go beyond the imagination. Let's just conclude this time, as they say in the church, with a moment of silence. Let's take a minute to be still, to focus on our breath, allowing each exhale to connect us with a deeper experience of ourselves, with that holy experience of ourselves. allow us to experience the divine of our own understanding in the stillness. So be it. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. play that song I'm gonna play something for you all right we believe for it yes I believe I believe it I believe you know we uh Think about that. Think about that. You know, we hear, you know, opinions and we hear things and see things and are brought to be attentive to all kind of stuff in absolutely every moment of our lives, probably in every single day, we run into a ton of folk, ton of situations, and we have to decide or choose are you going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? Cece, she knows she has it. She has it down like me. I mean, I'm down with that too. You know, if creator said it, if God said it, if father said it, I believe it. And I want to even take it farther. I want to choose to know it because father, creator, source, the universe <laughs> when that when that when play hey, like they say when uh, Ian, uh, Ian F. Hutton speak, you know, you can take it to the bank. Well, absolutely, absolutely, every word uttered, spoken, demonstrated, walked out, lived out that God, Creator, Source has said to us is absolute truth. It's it's, it's truth, and if it's true that God said it, then I'm like CC. You said it. I believe it. So this morning, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about our beliefs today. And we're going to hopefully, you know, have leave, leave here, leave today with something to contemplate on and to meditate on and to chew on for, for some while 
until we can come to decide whether we want to choose it to choose it as a belief or if we want to maybe turn it over again and look at it again. But we have many, 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 many beliefs. Absolutely everything about us is a demonstration of what we believe and our belief system. We actually, like I said, we actually have a, a system of beliefs, you know, a belief. Uh, first, we have a belief. We have this, this, this idea or this concept or this suggestion or this somebody told us so or this opinion or this idea. We have that. And then we build, you know, other beliefs on that, according to that. Well, we believe this part. So, you know, then if that's, you know, if I'm going to believe that, then I'm going to believe this too. So we we build a system of beliefs. And we we tend to, um, I don't know, we, we tend to decide and make a, make a choice to bring them into our, into our perception of life, of, of situation, of things. Like I say, we, we, uh, well, let me just say what a, a belief is. Let me just quickly define it. A, def, a belief is an idea or a thought or a remark or, a re, or an opinion that we have decided and, sh and have chosen. We made a conscious decision or sometimes unconscious. We made a decision to, yeah, believe that, to accept that, to accept that as a fact. Now, it does not necessarily have to be something that's true. Not really. It doesn't have to be false either. But if we believe it, if we bring it into our into our perception and into our understanding, into our system of beliefs, then for us, it's a fact, it's a truth. And basically they are, a belief is something, it's all those opinions and all those ideas and thoughts and you know things that we've accepted, as long as it's a belief, hasn't really been proven. Because once proven, once proven, without a doubt, it's no longer a belief. No, yeah? it's not a belief anymore. Once that 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 belief that you have, oh, I believe, I believe it's going to be a wonderful day. Well, until that day comes, and I and and I experience that wonderfulness about it, and then at the end of the day, I can look back and I can see all the wonderful things about it. Then that's proof. The proof is usually after the fact, or after the occurrence, or after the incident, or after you know, it's after an act. So we can, you know, we can we can say yesterday was a, uh, you know, yesterday was an awesome day. We can say that. We don't have to believe it. We can say that in it because you know we've experienced that and we've experienced that wonderful day. I have. Now, I don't know. Yesterday may not have been wonderful for you, but yesterday was a true fact. It was a wonderful day for me, and I can tell you all the reasons why. You know, it's, you know, it's done and it's over with, and you can't disprove me, okay? Because it's it's done. But basically, uh, again, a, a belief is is a thought, an opinion, or idea, perception, and something that we've accepted to be true, and it remains true to us, and we act on it. We live accordingly until it's replaced by something that may be come into contradictory of it, and then we have a we have the challenge. We have a challenge here because then we got two things that could be true. So we have to decide which one we're going to believe of it. So a tr uh, again, a belief is an idea, a thought, an opinion that we accept for truth until we can prove otherwise, all right? So we hold on to our truths again. We hold, oh, I'm sorry, we hold on to our beliefs again until until such time that they are proven or disproven. So have you ever thought about where you believe, you know, where do they come from? How do you come, how do you come, uh, come to believe a thing? Whatever it might be, what is, what is it that, what, what, how do you choose? How do you decide to believe or not to believe? What to believe, who to believe? And you, we're making that decision absolutely all, the, all day, every day with every situation and with every encounter we have, every relationship, every 
chit chat that we have every time we turn on the TV and we're listening to the news or we're listening to some promotion of some uh, advertiser, we are deciding whether it's, you know, we believe what we're hearing or believing what we're seeing or believing what we're watching or believing what you're saying or not. We decide that. We decide whether we believe it or not. Think about it. Think about how you come to choose, to decide what, when, and who to believe. Okay. And I want you to hold on to that. And I want you to, when you, when you start thinking about your beliefs, I want you to start, I want you to begin it. Well, somewhere, somewhere in, in, in the process or in the time in the, next, in the next few days, I want you to start looking at the things that you believe and, and wonder, wonder about where they come from, how they started. Most times, you know, like, that, like for me, I can say that most of my beliefs have come again from experiences that I've had with different folk. And it comes from the kind of relationship I might have with the different people. You know, for instance, my grandmother was, a, was an awesome cook. Now, if my daughter came up and she tried to tell me this is the perfect way to make bread, I would have, it, it would be a somewhat of, I would kind of have doubts there because my grandmother, <laughs> my grandmother knew how to make bread and she made bread. It was great bread. So I, you know, now I got to decide, if, you know, which one am I going to believe to have makes the best bread? You know, am I going to believe my daughter can do it or my grandmother can do it, you know, or my mom can do it. So we, we're deciding, we're replacing beliefs and, and, and displacing beliefs constantly, all the time. Now, just a belief, basically, again, you know, we, we kind of define what it is, but it, it's also a guiding our beliefs themselves, our, that system that we, we call that system of beliefs that we have. They're guiding principles, and they're guiding principles that guide us through our lives and through making other decisions about other things. And that's why I say it's a system. It's, we build a system of, of beliefs because one belief, you know, births another belief or or displace another, you know, just it's a belief, unbelief, unbelief. So th these beliefs provide us directions and meaning for our lives. Without belief, I think we'd probably be somewhat confused and lost can't even imagine not having some form of belief. Think, you know, just, con you know, under that just a minute, you believe nothing. You have no belief. And there are people that are, I think they're called, help me, help me, Larry, are they called agnostics or, or what are they called when they don't have a belief? They don't believe nothing. Are they, are they such a, such a body or they think that they don't believe? I think that, I think it's impossible not to have a belief, but what do you think? Um, well, agnostic is someone who ultimately believes, uh, um, holds a view that in any ultimate reality, um, it referring to God usually is uh, known, unknown, and probably unknowable. Okay, all righty. Uh, but not committed to believing in either the existence or non-existence. So they're unwilling to commit. Okay. To, to an opinion about it. Okay. Well, there, that kind of, that, that rests my case there. Even, even the unbelievers, if you would, are true, are believers. Because even if you believe in the un, that's a belief. So we, our lives are directed and guided by our beliefs. We, we turn them into principles. We turn them into, into almost close to fact, almost close to knowing so that we can go through our lives with some sense of direction. You know, I, I, I believe that I can, I believe that I could drive a car. So I get in my car and I drive. If I don't believe I can drive a car, then I'm going to probably have to walk or catch the bus, you know? So we, our lives are guided and these are just simple things, but think about all of your beliefs, everything that you believe in or believe about whatever you believe and understand that directs your your life it, it it you know it gets gets you going you do or you don't i believe it i believe i can i can i believe i can't i, I don't i won't 
So beliefs are basically guiding principles in our lives that provide direction and meaning for our life. Beliefs are presets, organized filters of, of, our, of our perception of things that we see and we do and we hear and we, and we take part in. They're presets, filters for our external as well as our internal, as well as our subconscious and us and our awareness. They all operate and and are guided and led by the by our beliefs and our system of beliefs. So again, they are in, in internal, I'm gonna call them internal commands because they Tell us what to do and what not to do. What can we do and what we can't do. Um, they're internal commands that give us directions and keep us mobile, mo keep us moving about and doing and acting out and the behave our behave behaving in such a way. Our beliefs, and again, remember that our beliefs create our reality. That again is a fact, it's a truth, it's an undisputable, undisputable, I do call it undisputable, indisputable, indisputable truth. You can't argue that, you can't, you know, we have, we, we've proven, our, because of our, our existence, it still proves to us what we believe. We may not understand it, we may, hey, we may think we believe a thing, but when you really start sitting down and you're reflecting on your life and you're evaluating your life and you're evaluating what's happening and going on in your life, Everything about it is what you believe. Now, you again, you might think that you believe this, but if your life is demonstrating and exposing and, and, and existing and demonstrating that, that's what you believe. You just, you're thinking that you believe that, but you truly believe that. So we can, our thoughts and our beliefs can, can be, you know, they can be um, opposite of each other. They don't have to be the same. And we know for a fact that we can, our words don't have to always line up with our beliefs, right? We can, we can say, we could, I can spout off all kinds of things. I can, I can tell you that I went to the moon, you know, and that's not, you know, I know in my heart of hearts, I can't believe that because I've never been there, but I can say it. So they don't, we don't have to always, our words that we speak out and our, but I promise you that your behavior when you, if you really stop and start evaluating, yeah, you you believe it. So that's why you're doing it. You believe it. That's why you're feeling it. You believe it. That's why you're taking the directions and going the way that you're going. You don't want to go that way. You you know like why you know then there's a, we do we do things sometimes because you know subconsciously we believe it out here in the awareness. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go that way. I don't want to be doing that. I don't want to act that way. I don't want to. No, that's not what I want. But remember, we don't get what we want. We get what and have what we believe. So if you, if something is going on in your, that you don't like about whatever about your life that you don't like, don't get so, don't get frustrated with yourself. Just sit down. Use a little meditation. Larry can help you with it if you need to go deeper. But have a, have a little time with your, your inner man, your inner self, and, and find out what is it that I truly believe. Because I'm, you know, I'm thinking, uh, you know, I don't, you know, I don't like what I'm seeing here. This is not what I believe I believe. <laughs> but if you are, if you are in the, if that's the direction you're taking, that's what you're doing. That's what you're acting out. That's what you, you know. You can only pretend. You can you can play act. You know, you know those. You know actors they act out all the time. But when they, you know, take those costumes off or they step off the set and they have their real lives, you know, yeah. yeah sometimes you can you know you can continue to do a thing and you can just create it a, to be a habit, and you can you know convince yourself by you know maybe maybe you 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 end up believing it subconsciously and you know you but you don't want to. All right. You don't you aware in your in your awareness. You don't. That's not what you have in mind for a belief. That's not the direction I want to take. So questions though, always look at always look at that when you, when something is going on in your life. That you keep seeing it in your life. 
then maybe you need to dive deeper and find out what is it that I truly believe? You know, I, you know, because whatever you believe, you, you, you know, you're going to do it. And your beliefs are going to be the honest, authentic you. You can believe you can, and you can believe you can't. One, you know, I can believe I can, and you can believe you can't. And, and, and both of us will act that out and we both of us will be right. That's why we, that's why usually and most times you'll hear people say a belief is that it's not either right or, or, or true or false or right or wrong or whatever it's, but it's, that's what you believe. Then you're going to act it out. Whether you believe it or whether I believe it or not, I might see you doing things like, why would he do that? You know, how could he believe that would be okay? Or she, she believed that's okay. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not part of your belief system. Because I would suggest to you something different, and I would keep suggesting to you something different. But if you don't believe me, then you're gonna continue to believe whoever you believed before me, and you're gonna keep doing. You know that's gonna be your choice. You know, that's, that's just it. Back off, Jean. This is my belief. So it is. Um, our beliefs again create our reality, and again, that those that they, they don't have to be a. It doesn't have to be a true, or it doesn't have to be a tr have to be truth. It doesn't have to be true, a truth that you believe, and neither doesn't have to be a an untrue or a lie. But whatever it is, for you, for you, it's true. I might see it and say, for me, it's no, that's just way off base. So one, so one can believe that they can, and another can believe that they can, and again, they both would be. They would both be right. And they would ultimately act out in their belief. One would do it and one wouldn't do it. Right? And but and, and it would be their reality, their individual reality would be the can, and then the other one would have a reality of can't. That's what they believe. And it says that in the absence of beliefs or in the absence of belief or in the inability to tap into a belief, people get, it's very confusing and it's very disempowering. Very, very disempowering. So we need beliefs again, because they direct our, they direct us and whether they're right or wrong, true or false or neither. You need that belief because it gives your life meaning. It gives your life direction. But again, that, that belief can empower you or it can disempower you. Yeah. You can have a belief that that makes you, that enables you to accomplish your potential or reach your potential. And then that you have may have beliefs that, you know, limit you from reaching those potential. And these are some, these are some really some truths about some facts and truths about beliefs. They are both empowering and they're both disempowering. They can be. You can have a belief that will totally cripple you, totally stop you from, you know, reaching any, any potential in your life or, or those potentials that you desire in your life or that encourage for you in your life or that others might see that, why you know, this person can do that. I know it's in them. But if that person doesn't believe it's there, then that person's not going to act on that potential. We are limitless, of course, potential. There's nothing we cannot cannot do. If we if we want to do, if we desire to do it, if we if we can believe it, because my it's done unto me what I believe. So if, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. You can do it. You can have it. You can be it. So what I want to do is I want to give you five points. And the first four points are, in my opinion, indisputable. You know, they've been proven to my satisfaction. And if you stop and think about them, you probably could see where they would be proven in your, in, to you, hopefully. The first one is, again, the first one, I've, I've talked about them a little bit here. The first point I want to make is that beliefs become our reality. What a man thinketh and believe in his heart, in his subconscious, in his inner man. That's who he is. We can only do and accomplish what we believe. 
And that scripture, that scripture says, it is done unto me according to my belief. It doesn't say it's done unto me according to my, my wants or even my wishes or even not. It just says that, and, and it went, and Jesus in, in, in his scripture, he said, ask. And if you believe, you can have what you ask for. So whatever you believe, you have to, even if you wish it, you can wish all day, but if you don't believe it, it's just like a want. You're going to be left wishing. You can dream, daydream and desire and, and have these ideas going on in your mind and, 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 and you can hear suggestions from people and you can hear encouragement, but until you believe them, receive them and believe them, then they'll just be things that you hear, opinions, wishes, dreams, wants. And even if you say you believe it and you really truly don't believe it, then those are beliefs that are unbeliefs. Yeah, you're, the wrong, you, you're believing wrong. They're wrong beliefs. The second point is your beliefs are not necessarily true or false. You know, they're not necessarily true or false. You decide if you're going to make it true for you. And then, and then, and only then, it can either empower you, which is a, which is number three, that that belief can empower you to reach and to accomplish and to do and to be and to have the what you desire, what you believe in, what you've asked for, what you've prayed for, what you've wished for. You could have it, or you can believe that you cannot have it, that you can't do, you can't be, I can't accomplish. I hear you all day long, Jean, telling me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but I don't see it that way. And I don't believe it that way because I'm weak. I, I, I can't, I try, try, and I just can't. And I can't convince myself to believe that. So I'm going to stay there. <laughs> and I know, me, I know, I know that you have the potential to do absolutely anything you choose to believe you can do. You know, within, you know, physical reasoning, you know, yeah, we, we're still in the body. So we, we may not be able to do some things that, that are way beyond the limits of our physical self, but those things that are not beyond our physical self, then we can do those if we if we believe that we can. All right. And the fourth one, the fourth absolute fact about truth about uh, beliefs is that they're not permanent. None of our beliefs are permanent. Just the fact that it's a belief itself make it not permanent. And that means that it's you can change it, you can modify it. You can replace it with another belief. So it creates our reality, not necessarily true or false, can empower you or disempower you, according to what that belief is. In other words, it can limit you or it can, you know, take the limits off you. And it's not permanent. So number the fifth one, the fifth one is not really a point, but it's more for me, it's more of a question for you to ponder. And and that's and and that is, you know, and you know, considering the first three or the first four. Are not beliefs, and because they're they're those are, you know, undis indisputable in my opinion. Why do we not challenge our beliefs? absolutely every chance we get to see, to prove it. Why do we just take things for, we make our mind up and say, oh, you know, Larry said this and I'm going to take you to the bank. Why don't we take time to challenge that belief or challenge that opinion, challenge that idea, challenge it? And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, I, I used to think, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, well, 
I used to think, you know, before I got to be a teenager, when I was a little adolescent and a kid, I believe what mama said, hey, I took that to the bank. But then I got to be a teenager <laughs> and I would challenge all those things. You know, mom would say this or dad would say that or whatever. I was like, hmm, all right, okay. Now let me see if I, let me see how, how, let me see how I can push that envelope a little bit. When we, as we grow older, I think we stop we stop those, those um, that curiosity and that kind of that rebelliousness, I guess is what some, our parents would call it. But I call it challenging, you know, challenging your beliefs, you know? You know, okay, grandma can make, you know, grandma can make the best cornbread in the world. I'm gonna see if I come, let me see. Let me see if how mine, how mine will work out. So, I mean, just these are just minor things, but I'm, I'm, I'm truly meaning for you to, I'm suggesting this it for what it's worth instead of being stuck on your beliefs open it up a little bit open it up and you know reason but don't hurt yourself you know don't cause no harm to yourself don't do anything crazy like think that you can jump off the roof without you know a parachute but challenge those beliefs sometimes question them go back and look at them evaluate them are they empowering me are they pushing me to the limit of who and what and, and what God says about me or what I be, what I think I believe about me? Challenge your beliefs. And and I'm just gonna just, you know, go one further and just, you know, be more discriminating as to who's who you believe. You know, I I can listen to the news all day long and then I can decide to listen to this station because they seem to be a little bit more factual or I've seen I've seen what they say demonstrated in my in my opinion and in my estimation to be more accurate and to be more truthful. So I, you know, I choose to say that this station is or that station or this newscaster or that newscaster is better or just a product that I buy. I, you know, okay, you know, they're all kind of different window cleaners. And they all brag about what they have and what they can do, but you know, then I can decide which one works for me, which 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 is best for me. So remember that your dreams, your dreams, your beliefs are creating who and what you are all the time, constantly. They're making, they're opening up and allowing you to express and expose and demonstrate your potential, or they're keeping you from taking that opportunity to do that. And they're not very, and they're not permanent and they're not always true. It might be true for me. I believe my belief might be true for me, but it might not be true for you. You haven't been able to work through that yet. I haven't been able to work through what you believe yet to believe it. But in all of that, understanding, I think for me to under to Understanding and knowing that helps me to be a much more tolerant human being, to understand that we don't see eye to eye all the time. Therefore, we don't believe the same. But I can't, I can't say that my belief is right and yours is wrong. Because until it's proven differently, what can I say? You know, I don't see it your way, but you know, okay. So take take time. Take your take take a moment. Take some some make an effort to reflect on your beliefs from time to from just from time to time periodically. Take some time to challenge, question, try to seek proof of you what you believe, and until you're satisfied and you lay it aside, and until you until it's totally proven undisputable. That's what we want to get. We want to get to a place where it's undisputable. That you, you can't argue, you can't talk me into believing, or, you know, that we can we can come up to agree. We can come up to, you know, collaborate and to agree that this, you know, reality is my, it's my, it's my beliefs. Yeah. And my, my beliefs can empower me, make me, make me, allow me to, to reach my potential or and beyond, or can keep me from it. 
these are some hints. These are some helpful ideas for actually challenging your beliefs. And one is to look for proof that your beliefs are true. And if there are any evidence that could change your mind, you know, that's, you know, just challenging your beliefs. Is there any evidence out there that could change what you, what you, what you believe? And examine the logic of your beliefs. You know, are they logical? Does it make sense? You know, I'm a human being and I know I can't just get up and walk across the water. So, you know, that's, no, I, believe, I don't believe I can do that. <laughs> Every time I try, I sink, you know. And, uh, and another one is, are you thinking in extremes? Like always or never? You know. Make my, I was told I was told as a little girl never say never and be cautious with be caution take caution when you say all I what you will always do or it's always that way no, no. use those use those you know discriminative just be, be you be a little bit more cautious careful when you use those always gotta must you know need a uh, every time. And then finally, question whether the belief is a help, is, it helps you or does it hinder you? Does, I, does what I believe help me or hinder me? Those are just, you know, a few things that you can do to challenge your beliefs, to reflect on the things that you believe in. And I, I mean, absolutely everything. You know, it, I'm, nothing should be exempt. Everything that you believe and don't know for truth or fact or knowing Yes, then there's up. For, it's up for challenge, and and you know, in my opinion, and hopefully today it'll be in your opinion as well to challenge those beliefs, avoid the always and never, and until until you know that you know that you know. That's all I have today, and and hopefully again, hopefully um, you receive something in regards to your beliefs, and that will help you. Choose them, choose them wisely. Choose them, you know, with some logic and some discrimination, some something that makes sense. And it's not and not just because somebody told you so. Prove it for yourself. That's something that my guru, Neville Goddard, says. He says, I can tell you all day long what happens to me and how things work out for me, because I've proven it for me but you want to prove it for yourself or not. Again, that's your, your, your choice. You choose your decision. You choose your beliefs. Sometimes they choose you, <laughs> but you, cho but when they are a part of your being, they're yours until you challenge and you change them in aware, in awareness and consciousness, deliberately participating in it. Right? Not because mama said so, or the preacher said so, or Jean said so. You have it have to be what Rome, what Team Conscious Creators, what Larry, what Jean, what we decide. We did we get to decide, we get to choose what we believe. And we understand that we have what we believe, not what we want, not simply because we wish it or dream it. We have it because we believe it. It is done unto me according to what I believe, not anything less. That's all I have for you today. And I hope, I pray, and, and really I sincerely wish today, <laughs> my desire, my choice would be that you that you receive something today that you can, can empower you and not diminish you or disempower you. Thanks again for joining me this morning, this afternoon. And I am going to remember next time to post in our chat the broadcast from the previous week, previous, and I didn't, I didn't make a copy, of, I mean, didn't have it handy today, but I will, starting next week, I'll, I'll post the broadcast from uh, this week, next week, and we're going forward. Then you'll be able to go back and review it, share it, and hope, and hopefully share it. And and hopefully go back if you need to to you know to just refresh what what we, what we share today. 
I love to, I love to go back because I get to use uh, Larry's meditations to guide me through a meditation off and on during the week. So if, if that's how I use it, go back in that way. But anyway, have a wonderful week to come. Remember that you are indeed a conscious, aware, and a, a being who can make decisions and decide and choose and listen and hear and and believe and have and do. Until next week, manifest best and God bless you. And I love you because you are loved and lovable and loving. So until next week, take care. I'm gonna try to play a little bit of, I can find it, phrase, our, our theme song. I have to. I do have to remind. Have to say that uh, Jerry and uh, Couture. They uh, they they're doing a, a well. Couture is doing a weekend with her sisters in Houston, and she told me to tell everybody hello. What she would hopefully see you guys next week. And uh, and Jerry kind of had some crazy things going on with her five boys this morning, so she wasn't able to join us. And she says that hopefully she'll see everybody next week as well. So until then. Gonna pay a little bit of Chandler and the gang, and we're gonna get on out of here. To him. <laughs>